I am under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me yeah. Please make sure you pray. I am victorious. I have overcome. I am victorious. I have overcome I am victorious hallelujah not too long ago I went to preach in a particular nation and when I got to that nation coincidentally our father in the Lord Baba Deboe also came to have a private meeting there and so I requested to just come and honor him and our mother and when I got there we, you know just cracked jokes and spoke and then I got down my knees and for the first time most times he would pray for me alone but this time around he was together with our mother and I will not tell you what they told me but I tell you the truth that if you receive that kind of blessing and prophecy upon your life you can go to bed it was it was from it was from the depth of his spirit and mommy was by his side and he released a blessing from his spirit man you see great men are made by secret experiences most of them don't share it but it does not mean it is not there there are many things that God has granted upon our heads that produce the things that we see. If Reverend Sam should come up with his wife, they would tell you striking moments where one thing after the other happened. One thing after the other. I remember one time I went to preach for a particular ministry and they kept me at the prayer city, MFM. And when I had finished preaching later in the night when everybody had gone to sleep, protocol had gone, nobody to disturb me. I came out and I went to the prayer ground and I lay down there and I cried I said God I thank you for a rich prayer life that you have given me but there are people who have this as an office may that grace rest upon my life hallelujah I can tell you story upon story some of these people have gone to be with the Lord and so I have searched for those they imparted upon and say what did they tell you before they died I went to preach in a particular nation not too long it was an incredible meeting one of the highest they had had in many many years 65,000 people and they told me they said one of the fathers of faith said the last time this happened was when Morisorulo came and I was his interpreter I said daddy that means he prayed for you I never had the opportunity to meet him sadly but can you pray for me said, ah great apostle I said no leave what happened on, on the crusade ground what happened on the crusade ground is there please can you place something upon my head are we together I once met a group of widows all of them had lost their husbands they covenanted with themselves as a prayer group to keep praying for me that's all they do seven of them my God if these women pray for you seven of them successful people and I had the honor of meeting them and they were all happy wanting to kneel down I said I will not be that stupid I'm wise enough you've lost your husbands and you dedicated yourself to pray for me I will be stupid to stand there and do emoji I got down my knees I said as mothers from the bowels of your spirit pour out that blessing let it come from the depth of your heart I don't know how many times I may have shared it in this blessed church my encounter with equity you know the long life encounter and I remember the high point of it was not the fact that the oldest man there prayed for me but I remember the wife of the man who had died 136 years and the wife was still alive and I pleaded with her someone interpreted what I was saying she only could speak Yoruba 
said please let this i don't know whether my great grandchild now or whatever i will call i said please and the woman tapped me we entered a room and she was showing me the photos that was the husband of her youth and you know those days they married as teenagers and i said please whatever it is that was on him that has been on her can she release on me she said kneel down and she removed her shoes and placed her legs on the ground and for 15 minutes this woman was reigning would you call her a grandmother a great grandmother's blessings listen i want you to know that god did not put this meeting this is beyond falling down and standing up this is reprogramming a plethora of graces just resting on your life and then to see what happens years ago i was in joss i went to buy sugar cane and then i saw two women old women and i decided to pay for them they didn't have much but i said please you are mothers let me just honor you and they said no 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 i said i insist and i paid it was not more than 100 naira and the next thing they looked at me and they began to bless this young boy and one of the women looked at me and she said my son forever walk upon gold i don't believe those people were ordinary women i don't believe that so i don't know what dimension is deficient in your ministry open your mouth in one minute you are lying down on a ground here i like you to pray please cry from the depth of your heart cry to the god of heaven advance pray advance pray 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 just a few minutes and we're done man of god pray doors are about to be open for you hallelujah 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 It's a new season in ministry It's a new season in ministry Please pray one minute, don't be tired. Ancient Zion's King, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's King, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. 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 Let me speak over you. Now I'm going to pray over you. And when I do, a point is going to come when I will kindly invite Reverend Sam there is a grace upon his life that I sense in my spirit that you must have God has granted him unusual acceptance even among the Caucasians 
even across the nations of the earth and it is a grace that many people need even at this point in their lives but i want to pray for you i decree and declare right now the grace that drives a man to the secret place to hunger and seek for god take that grace now take that apakatos ketebata receive that grace right now that grace for the secret place let it come like fire let it burn everything that is not of god in the name of jesus christ number two i don't know what has hidden your glory hidden your destiny but i stand by the apostolic and the prophetic as one helped by god in the name of jesus rise to be global rise to be global by the spirit of the living god receive the grace for visibility in the name of jesus i break limits territorial limits cultural limits in the name of jesus christ help them please I call you out, out of cultures. I call you out. I pull you prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ. number three now hear me i want to release the grace for speed and many people will start running by the anointing you don't have to bring them out but just help them so they don't injure themselves in the name of jesus i come by the rod of a higher priesthood and for every ministry every business here receive speed 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 up Help them, please help them. Speed. I release that grace. I release that mantle. I release that grace. I release that mantle. I release that grace. Speed in ministry. Ten years in one year. One year in one month. Halibara, you are the mighty God. Hey, Latobi, you are the Halibara. You are the mighty God. One more time. Halibara. hallelujah I want to declare the favor of God upon you I don't know how people live without it Reverend Sam I don't know how people excel without the favor of God but I want you to believe me that when this mantle actually enters your life you will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen right now in the name of Jesus for as many whose hearts are open to receive I stretch my hands right now. Receive the grace for favor. Receive the grace for favor. Favor in the city. Favor in the country. Favor in Abuja. Favor in Lagos. Favor in Europe. Favor in America. Favor in the Caribbean. All over the globe. Receive it in the name of Jesus. hallelujah hallelujah now you're about to receive the last and then i'm done the grace for signs and wonders listen in an era 
of faking miracles, telling lies, state managing all kinds of things. It is absolutely unnecessary when you carry this grace. There are many of you right now who have the call of God upon your life. It takes more than a message. You will need the backing of heaven. Signs, wonders, manifestations of power. I want to agree with you. And then I'll ask Reverend Sam to come. And I truly believe that he's going to declare that grace upon your life. I don't know where you are. You may be a man of God, a prophet, an apostle signs and wonders will distinguish you it can brand a man and put you in a class of relevance even for the sake of his majesty i'm praying right now maybe not for everybody but for someone who has cried some of you have seen it in dreams there will be a mighty outpouring right now father i declare at the count of three please everyone shout jesus and that grace rests upon you father that you honor your word let there be mighty impartations for signs and wonders are you ready at the count of three one two three shout jesus take that grace take that grace take that grace i activate the miraculous in ministry signs and wonders signs and wonders you will be a woman of god with power and fire you will be a man of God with power and fire. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can I please invite Reverend Sam to just come up? The setting of the same Your name is to be hallowed I can tell you in truth One of the graces And I've seen this grace at work in Reverend Sam's life God has granted him unusual access even among the Caucasians, they are a very difficult people group to penetrate. And God has granted him that grace. And while I was here, I just sensed in my spirit that he's going to make some declarations. I know he will still come back up, but I just want him to make that declaration. Please open up your heart and receive it. Reverend Sam, God has helped you. God has opened these doors. Please, can you declare over his people? Can I say something here? whilst i was on my knees here that's very private i'm not going to make that public as much as i honor the grace of god over the apostle um, the lord has told me something i must pursue in him and i will sow into that very strongly i'm going to do something i've never done i'm going to give at a level i've never done to anybody at this level because i know what the lord has spoken to me and I know God has opened doors for me, globally and all of that, cross-culturally, I know that. And the apostle was the very first in this city, after Pastor Kunle Shorinyo came and said, Pastor Sam, we recognize there's a grace on your life that has opened doors for you across the nations. And I said, I didn't even think about that. And then apostle came and said, Pastor Sam, we've seen that grace on your life. And I must thank you, sir. I never knew that. And I sense in my spirit today, rather than just pray that the grace that is, I have a cry that it will not just be what I carry. We are all standing together. Can it be what we carry? Can I pray with you, joining my hands with the apostle, that there will be a double portion on your life? Apostle, may I just humbly, can we pray together? This is the first time you are having this. And as we begin to pray, barriers will begin to break. People will begin to fall under the power of God because a double is coming on you. That's the power of God on your life. A double is coming on you. 
a double is coming on you a double is coming on you man God that double is coming on you like fire gates are broken chains are destroyed chains are destroyed doors are shattered yokes are destroyed we speak over your life from today your doors are open I need some help on the monitor here your doors are open your gates are open Paul the apostle said when I arrived at Troas a door was already open from today the doors of cities are open the doors of regions are open the doors of nations are open the doors of the hearts of men are open the doors of the hearts of kings are open from today we decree and declare be you lifted up ye everlasting doors be you lifted up oh ye gates from today i decree the nations are open the nations are open the nations are open your doors are open every altar keeping your doors closed we shatter the altar we destroy the altar every word spoken over your life that has closed your doors we command the words overturned we command the words overturn. your doors are open marital doors open ministry doors open business doors open career doors open I decree all doors open all doors open if you receive that shout your loud as they anyway I have joined the heads of men of God together carrying stories from pillar to post comparing churches comparing men of God no that is not our assignment someone open up your mouth and pray in any way insulting orthodox churches insulting pentecostal charismatic churches insulting prophetic and apostolic churches insulting churches that are rich in administration and excellence are you praying Lord, we repent, we repent, we repent. Hallelujah. Number two, I want you to pray for the body of Christ. Mention the name of any man of God you believe in and any man of God you know from your heart of hearts mention any church that you know and you believe in i want you to cry and say lord show mercy mercy and increase let your body remain strong open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray let it be from the depth of your heart that god will help us as the body of christ to grow and mature from this life of hatred and anger pointing hands at people and all these kinds of immaturities Is someone praying pray for that old pastor that raised you from an orthodox church now you have been filled with the holy ghost you are a revivalist and you are looking down on him pray and ask god to forgive you and pray that god will continue to help them pray for every denomination you know that the dimension of god committed to them that it will find expression and it will bless the body excellence administration moral excellence the anointing character influence discerning the body of christ
Alleluia. Elijah was a very angry man. For annoying Elijah, you pay the price by fire. Fire would come and consume you for interrupting him while he's resting. Elisha had some little children who were laughing at him and said, Ah, you bald headed man. And he commanded using the power he carried. He commanded animals, she bears, to come out from the wilderness and ate those children, injured them. Can you imagine that? So there was a generation who had been mentored by the Elijahs and Elishas. Now they had become the disciples of Jesus. And when other people were pointing hands at Jesus, they say, we remember, history tells us how to deal with this kind of people. Should we call down fire? And Jesus said, do you not know what spirit you are of? In other words, I have come as an improvement to Elijahs and Elishas. While it used to be profitable to just kill, now we have come with the ministry of love. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray right now and say every dimension that is invested in the body and is not yet at work in my life, I receive by faith right now. Go ahead and pray. Every dimension made for my profiting, scattered across the body of Christ, that may not yet be at work in my life, every genuine dimension scattered within the body and across the body that is that can make for my efficiency spiritually financially and otherwise in the name of Jesus I receive someone is praying hallelujah hallelujah when I travel across the regions of this nation, especially I like to minister in non-denominational apostolic meetings that seem to converge the body of Christ together. Many times when I have the privilege and the honor of ministering to the body of Christ across those regions, um, when God gives me the liberty, I always like to call some of the fathers of faith to come to the front and to just speak over the body of Christ within that region. I do that because I believe that number one, they are veterans of the gospel, and then number two, they represent different dimensions. It, it does something to the mindset of the people. Please, I repeat again, do not find yourself fighting the body of Christ. You have a right now and forever to have your reservations. As a ministry, I have a right to protect you from anything that I do not believe is healthy for your spiritual nourishment. I have a right to teach you that which is consistent for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness like the Bible says. But I do not have a right to turn and call anybody Beelzebub. No. That is not the jurisdiction of my ministry. If my ministry is light enough, I should not fear darkness. Is that true? There was darkness in the days of Jesus and yet the light of Jesus was so bright it threatened every darkness. The presence of fake men of God and fake prophets is not enough reason to derail the body. If your light is bright enough, the illumination that comes from that light, I tell you the truth, can swallow every error. In the time of Jesus, there was error. In the time of Moses, there was error. The world has never been free of antichrist manifestations until Christ comes. So having people that walk in defiance to the true gospel is not news. But the Bible tells us in John 1, 5, that the light shineth in darkness. When we preach the true gospel and we mentor people properly, the rate of transformation and growth will far supersede any kind of fear we have. It is not the absence of darkness that will bring light. It is the illumination of light, even in the midst of darkness. Hallelujah. Can I give you a last prayer point? Father, the role I have to play as far as the grace you have given me is concerned, I receive the grace and the courage to play that role. 
open up your mouth and pray do not say they are anointed men and women of God do not say there are great business people there is a role that you have to play and if you do not play that role effectively you will rob us from learning Christ through you you will rob us from experiencing a dimension of Christ that has been invested into your life open up your mouth and pray pray from the depth of your heart pray from the depth of your heart We used to sing a song years ago. Here's what the song says. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll do my best. I'll do my best I'll do my best for you with my entire life I'll do my best my very best I'll do my best for you that's our closing song tonight I'll serve I'll serve I'll serve you Lord forever I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll do my best, I'll do my best, I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best, I'll do my best. The day we stand before Jesus, the son of the living God, he's not going to say, Joshua Selman, did you do everything? No. Did you do that which was committed to you? I gave you three people to raise and to train and to build. Were you faithful in it? No. I was around backbiting and being jealous and being angry that I was given only three people. Man of God, not all of us will have international ministries. Your job is not to be international. Your job is to be faithful. If God gives you 10 members, stay on them and raise them with all your heart. Listen, I need to douse the insecurity and the narrative that is creeping into the body of Christ. Once you do not have a large congregation, once you are not doing ministry across the globe, once you don't seem to have a global name, Apostle Joshua Selman, you might not be doing well. I have deconstructed this thought again and again. The day we stand before Jesus, you will be surprised where all of us will be standing on the queue. Some of the people you have neglected will be the ones standing close to him as far as the detailed accomplishment of the assignments are concerned. Anna the prophetess, stop looking for a crowd. Stay in the temple and pray Jesus to come. Let us stop some of this unhealthy comparison, wrong definitions and parameters that we use to measure ministry. There are people who are about losing their bishopric today. Everybody cannot be the Nathaniel Bassis and the Dunsins and all of that. No, everybody cannot be the Benny Hins, but you can be faithful where you are called and to do your very best. And whether he gave you five talents or two, you can be sure that you will still hear the same thing. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. This is what we desire. If God has called you to be a kingdom financier, Stop trying to build branches. You will only multiply error in the body of Christ. Stay in your place of call and be faithful. Take advantage of the mercy of God. You are an intercessor. Give God your best. God has spread your tentacles to the nation. You must do it with the spirit of humility, not laughing at other people as though it were by your power. People have sent me numerous text messages about our UK conference. Massive, massive things God is doing. 
the number of people who have registered, I mean, it's when all of what God has done. But I cannot look down people to say, man of God, you who has, you are doing a small conference that just has three people and you laugh at them. Make sure you never find yourself doing that. Do not laugh at any man of God. They may hold a conference with five people that is made up of Billy Graham, Reinhard Bonke, E.W. Kenyon. Those are the five people you are laughing at. Whereas you are full of thousands of people who will tell you crucify him tomorrow. I rest my case. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher. Be lifted higher. Submit your request while you pray. The Bible says to be anxious for nothing. It says, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you, for you. Oh Lord, will you put my life in order for you, for you? I want to know you, Lord. I want to know your ways Oh Lord Set my heart on fire for you For you Oh Lord Set my life in honor for you I want to know you, Lord. I want to know your ways. Just one prayer request. Father, I am available to be used mightily by you. I pray that you will use me like never before. Open your mouth and pray. Whether in ministry, whether as a lecturer, whether as a student, whether as a husband, a wife, a father, a son, a daughter, a career person, a professional, open your mouth and pray. I am available. I am available. I am available in the name of Jesus. I am available by the power of the Holy Ghost. I am available. As you raise mighty men and women, as you anoint men for this end time kingdom assignments, I am available. Find a vessel in me in the name of Jesus Christ. Now pray and declare, I obtain grace to be prayerful. I obtain grace to be systemic even in my prayer. I obtain grace to be a student of scripture. Are you praying? I obtain grace by the power of the Holy Ghost to listen to scripture, to listen to teachings. I obtain grace to speak the word, faith declarations that speak and program possibilities over my life. Declare the power of the Holy Ghost upon my life. The power of the Holy Ghost upon my ministry the power of the holy ghost upon my family the power of the holy ghost upon my body the power of the holy ghost upon my children is someone praying the power of the holy ghost upon my academics the power of the holy ghost upon my career in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare it is not by power not by might it is by the spirit Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. So this is how it works. When the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, the Bible says Christ is revealed as the wisdom of God and it is revealed, is revealed as the power of God. When the anointing comes upon you, it can translate to wisdom, guiding you to know what to do. And it can translate to the force that corrects every anomaly in your life. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. We're going to spend just about maybe five minutes, max ten, by the grace of God. I like you when you're ready with the request, please bring them. And then I will speak over your life. I promised yesterday that I was going to pray for the sick. We may not have time to take testimonies, unfortunately, because of our time. But I will speak over your life. Then I'll pray over the request. We'll do the final impartation. And then we're done. But hear me, ladies and gentlemen. If there is anything about this life that you are seeing, I'm a product of God's grace. But it is also because I place value on the power of God. The ministry of strategic prayer being built by the word and then embracing the engracing, the ever increasing empowerment of the spirit. Because you see, yesterday's excellence will be tomorrow's mediocrity. Just because you received fire yesterday does not mean it will suffice for the rest of your life. Some of you, you are here, you came for this meeting yesterday and today weary, dried up in your spirit. But the Bible says, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high, then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful ground, vine, and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest. There is no limit to what the Holy Spirit is able to do. I see several of you just standing across as far as you can get. Wherever you are, I want you to release your faith as I pray. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. Truly you will be changed His glory will be revealed When the Spirit takes over us I'd like you to stretch your hands towards this request as we pray this is the most accurate representation of the needs of everyone. Jesus said it is the sick that need the doctor. Some of these needs here represented are life-threatening issues. Some of these issues represented here are issues of shame and embarrassment. I'd like you to declare these that I see, these Egyptians, I see them no more forever. I'm going to bow my knees to pray. You don't kneel, you just pray just for two minutes to lay my hands upon them. Everybody, whether you are outside, you are following from across the globe, stretch your hands and begin to pray. Pray in the spirit and decree and declare.
Father, the Bible says, Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. In the name of Jesus, I bow my knees in partnership with all the graces here represented. And we declare under this corporate anointing that every request that has been placed before the Lord here, let it become your testimonies now. Shout a louder amen. Let it become your testimonies now. In the name of Jesus. Every life-threatening situation here, I decree and declare you become a testimony now every spirit that is back of the tragedies here represented by the blood of the eternal covenant we curse you and we declare a release for God's people and finally in the name of Jesus prophetically I stand upon this request every challenge that has risen above you we bring it under your feet we bring it under your feet we bring it under your feet in the name of Jesus Christ now very quickly everywhere inside or outside I want you to place your hand if you came here sick or you brought someone sick lay your hands we're out of time but I have to do this lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest and you can stand in for someone it doesn't have to be for yourself there's someone that comes to mind you can stand in to receive from them for them the centurion stood for his son Jarius stood for his daughter I sent my word and it healed your disease I am the Lord, your healer. Place your hand there. I want to pray for you. He gave us the power and the authority to declare upon the sick and that they be healed. Now in the name of Jesus, every spirit and every devil of infirmity that has plagued families plagued destinies in the name of Jesus Christ and by the blood of the eternal covenant I command that that spirit leaves your body now I command that that spirit leaves your body now now I declare to you in the name of Jesus be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed now be healed now my god there's such a strong healing anointing be healed now i condition satabakatobata be healed now ear conditions be open now bone conditions in the name of jesus be corrected now blood conditions genotype issues all kinds of blood conditions be healed now be healed now fibroids and all kinds of malignant growths in the name of Jesus be healed now we command that those growths die and dissolve from your bodies in the name of Jesus Christ cancer and any cancer related case we command that cancer cell to die now every genotype you desire change I declare that it changes supernaturally now back pain severe back pain let it be healed right now there's someone you have very severe pain one of your molars in fact it's, it's almost like you have it's a cavity problem but it's it's an advanced state there's severe pain you can literally chuck something in there in the name of Jesus let that teeth be supernaturally filled now there is there is a man here your situation 
this is something that that relates to men and this thing has affected you and affected your marriage I declare in the name of Jesus let there be supernatural restoration for you now supernatural restoration now in the name of Jesus the Lord is showing me someone who is suffering from pile pile very painful pile sometimes you are not able to go to the toilet in the name of Jesus be healed right now and anyone here appointed unto death we declare and declare that your life is lengthened by the Spirit of God every ailment whether every ailment whether I mentioned it or not be healed from it now be healed from it in the name of Jesus and for all those you are standing in for I declare that the power of God touches them right where they are in the name of Jesus Christ I prophesy over your life in the name of Jesus every door that has been closed over you I command that door to be opened now God has declared unto us that this is our year of open doors I declare doors be open now in the name of Jesus for those who are students I prophesy upon you extraordinary intelligence by the Spirit extraordinary intelligence by the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ and for anyone here who has been going through patterns and circles of demonic activities witchcraft and all kinds of satanic manipulations you are hereby delivered forever you are hereby delivered forever you are hereby delivered forever in the name of Jesus Christ I declare over Zaria the reign of wickedness witchcraft the activities of evil people let it come to an end right now we make decrees this is by the decree of the watchers by the power of the Holy Ghost this environment becomes unconducive for any satanic activity in the name of Jesus we pray for all the churches that are represented here in Zaria every church represented let there be fresh fire upon the altars in the name of Jesus Christ Zaria remains a place of salvation remains a place of training remains a place of revival in the name of Jesus Christ I declare over your finances by the power of the Holy Spirit let the grace called favor rest upon you 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 in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. now the final impartation I want to pray for you you don't have to bring anyone out if anyone is under the anointing just guide them we don't have that time now but I want to pray there will always be people who are called to take there are many empty positions in the spirit in Zaria because many people have moved and some of those positions are crying for men and women who will stand and continue what is being done you see the days of superstar Christianity of one person trying to is over the Lord is raising as many not just one person you know and all of that because if only a few people are there they stand the risk of suffering pride and temptation and once they fall out of the way that's the end of it when God raises many people it is beneficial even for those who are there because it takes away the tendency to be tempted with pride and to believe I am the only one hallelujah there are many people who are rising from the campuses to the various churches I just want to release this grace upon you and it will rest upon you because for some of you this grace will quicken you into a place of retreat for some of you this grace will quicken you to a place of prayer some of you this grace will come to activate many possibilities right now in the name of Jesus by the anointing of the Spirit inside 
all the overflows overflow three two one the extension at the count of three i decree and declare the grace and the mantle that is required for this season in the name of jesus christ receive it right now one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now i activate that grace the spirit of prayer and supplication receive it right now receive it right now the mantle of a prayer warrior the grace to pray and pray down revival receive it in the name of jesus christ the spirit of revelation access to light from scripture i release that anointing upon you right now in the name of jesus christ i stir up the prophetic and the apostolic every dormant grace the eyes that see and the ears that hear may that grace be quickened from within you now i decree and declare kingdom financiers rising with the dignity of kingdom integrity received a pakatoshketa i release that grace saria you shall not lack may god raise men with the dignity of kingdom integrity that will supply resources for kingdom advance in the name of jesus christ i pray concerning the worshipers those called into the ministry of psalmistry prophetic psalmistry whether you are inside or outside i stir up that grace after the order of david receive that mantle now receive that songs of the spirit songs of the spirit receive it in the name of jesus I pray for all those who are being raised by God to be the next lecturers the next career people in the name of Jesus let the spirit of excellence rest upon you let the spirit of excellence rest upon you let the spirit of excellence rest upon you in the name of Jesus let the spirit of excellence rest upon you There are some of you here by age 30 you are already professors in the name of jesus such a display of unusual excellence a level of mental acumen as has never been seen i pray for every family here represented let no family in zaria let no family here represented lack a priest that can rise in that family in the name of jesus christ and hear me if there is any of your loved one who is not saved whether your brother whether your sister whether your spouse whether your child whether your parents we agree right now as the church of the lord jesus christ beginning from tonight may the spirit of god begin to convict them even unto salvation convict them even unto righteousness in the name of jesus christ finally the spirit of bloodshed the spirit of untimely death over and around this region parakatos katibalata in the name of jesus christ we declare that that reproach is rolled over zaria rolled over the body of christ for in jesus mighty name we pray hallelujah now listen very carefully there are thousands of people scattered across this place and thousands others falling online i want you to lend me your attention this is my last night with you for now and i want to make an altar call you know what an altar call is an altar call is a moment of genuine surrender and reception of the life of jesus please no movement minimize movement inside and all the overflows you've been here and whilst you heard me speak the holy ghost began to convict you that you are that champion that god is raising that you are that person that god wants to greatly use but you see 
everything in this kingdom starts with God Jesus is the way I told you earlier on there are some of you who have never truly surrendered your heart in truth you have not made that determined decision to begin a walk with God or there are those who for whatever reason your life has gone haywire and you want to rededicate your life in this auditorium and all the overflows listen to me the Bible says in the day that you hear his voice do not harden your heart Jesus Christ is giving you an opportunity to make it right I'm going to count one to five like I did yesterday all those who are within this auditorium who are saying apostle I want to make it right with Jesus and in truth and that of your baby out of her now out in the name of Jesus let that be the end of it for the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit please lay your hands I want to pray we may not have the time to take testimonies but do feel free to testify during the conference and for those of you who are watching across the nations of the earth here is an opportunity to be healed no matter how long it has been he gave us the power to bring the life of Jesus to as many if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest and you can stand in for someone your spouse your children I'm seeing someone lifting photos there you can stand in for someone for you are glorious and worthy to be praised you are the Lamb help them please keep your hands you are great don't sing you do miracles so great there is no one else ah the healing power of Jesus is moving across this place there is no one else like you you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no I'm about to pray a lady is going to shout a loud shout to the hearing of everybody immediately after that shout the healing power of God will begin to move father in the name of Jesus every spirit of infirmity every devil of darkness masquerading itself as a medical condition the Bible declares that he went about healing all day that were oppressed. I command that spirit to let you go now. And now in the name of Jesus, I bring you life, life to your body. Peptic ulcer be healed now. Bone conditions be healed now. There is a lady here I'm seeing you have an issue of blood you don't have to come out literally an issue of blood this is this is a draining embarrassing situation in the name of Jesus wherever you are I command that demonic thing to stop now there's someone you have a problem with your heart you cannot lie down on this side of your chest to the bed you are going to have excruciating pain in the name of Jesus I declare healing for you now asthma be healed now total blindness partial blindness be healed now there's someone you are having severe pain just at the, the your back the lumbar area in the name of Jesus Christ be healed right now there's a woman your right breast you've been having severe pain and you've been afraid to go to the hospital 
because you are hoping it does not become anything that you know something funny you don't want to hear any report but you've been having very severe pain i don't care what the situation is in the name of he who died and rose from the dead let that pain leave you now i'm seeing i don't know if he's a gentleman now or a lady you have a very embarrassing skin condition this is something i don't know is it's like it looks like eczema but it's not eczema you've been trying to treat it right now the power of god is coming upon you i declare be healed now be healed now there is a man here you have a medical condition that is common to men in the name of jesus i am praying for you the lord gives you a miracle right now there is a lady whose hair falls you know just like a cancer patient you are losing your hair and you are it's even beginning to surprise you you've discussed this with your mother this is what i'm seeing by the power that raised christ from the dead your healing comes right now now whether i mention your case or not in the name of jesus the son of the living god be healed now hallelujah now i i i listen carefully listen carefully i want to charge you by the spirit of god that you take the time to listen to this teaching again even including the prayer and pray it for yourself and for your loved ones and you will marvel and wonder at what god does to your life would you spare me a minute to speak favor over your life? Mm. I don't know how people live without it. In fact, it is impossible to live without it. The proof of favor is not money. No, money is the proof of value, not favor. The proof of favor is the tripartite coexistence of unusual kindness unusual access and unusual acceptance when these tripartite forces are working in the life of a man you truly carry the favor of God Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty Exodus, I mean Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. The B part says, And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Verse 17 of the same chapter 2. It says, And the king loved Esther above or more than all the virgins, the women, and she obtained grace. He now set a royal crown. Can I tell you the truth? There is truly a grace for favor. That it, when the grace for favor comes upon you, it is only a blind man that cannot bless you. But for as long as a person looks at you, they are compelled by God to express unusual kindness, unusual acceptance, unusual access. I release my faith with our father and pastor here to speak over someone. Maybe it's been a wilderness for you. You've been trusting God to come out of shame and reproach. In the name of Jesus, the one who gave gifts to men, from the depth of my heart I speak, carry this grace for favor. Carry this grace for favor. Favor in your business. Favor in your family. Favor in your career. Favor in your church. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it begin to work for you. And for all of you who are out here, I stretch my hands. Like some people had chased me into that closet. But I made up my mind that I was going to go out all the same. I said, if I perish like Esther, I perish. As soon as I opened the door, I met this giant gray bearded man that I know now is a representation of the Holy Spirit. And he stretched his hands and I stretched back my tiny hands and placed it on him and he said, I will walk with you. And then we began to move 
moving from one building to the other on our way down that's the vision number one and you know for a long time when you see that you would think it's just spiritual food and spiritual water alone but i believe that it is all encompassing whatever food represents food represents the basis for nourishment and sufficiency hallelujah so when i teach topics like this i'm not teaching as an advisor there is an anointing and a mantle that came are we together to teach what i am teaching number two in that vision i was standing ready to serve god's people and there was a machine you know very strangely the machine was mixing bread with honey and my assignment was to just cut a piece and serve the people automatically it was not me mixing it the machine you know how you put jam or blue band in between the bread it was doing it on its own and that machine you could not even see the end of it my assignment was just to stand it would churn out bread mixed with honey dripping honey from the bread it was dripping to the ground and people would taste of it and run and join the queue again i know i saw that happen many times and there was no such thing like you've been here before don't come again people would eat and run and they were calling their loved ones and saying come and the queue started elongating elongating and people were taking the bread and honey some will run back and stand on the queue others will have their loved ones come to join bread and honey listen ladies and gentlemen there are people who teach finances because of their passion to release people from lack and want and poverty and that is wonderful there are people who teach finances because they had an opportunity to study along the lines of finances and they are bringing their value and serving the body of christ or serving you know society generally and that is profitable there are others who have become professionals by reason of their exposure to you know financial institutions and they feel that they have something to say but there are people who have been mandated with a mantle upon their head are we together now and god has given them an assignment among the many other things is to open the eyes of people so that they will see when you sit under this anointing and under those kinds of people i guarantee you regardless your experience if your heart is opened you will watch the wonder walking god lift you out of financial shame and reproach and may this be that night for you in the name of jesus i have watched with sadness the limiting effect of being poor or financially incapacitated I know it like you know that it has affected preachers it has affected families listen carefully it has affected ministries it has affected nations it has affected government finance is one of the number one sponsors for compromise of character many people today who otherwise would have been worthy representations models for generations they survived every other temptation but they could not stand finances are we together now judas is carried survived every other thing but when it came to the money issue he felt like a pack of card in fact one of the principal areas that would have brought embarrassment to the ministry of jesus was the issue of finances he was teaching doing the things that he was doing and the tribute collectors came and they began to embarrass him you claim to be a teacher of righteousness but you are owing the government you have not been able to pay your tax and that was a statement that would indict and embarrass him and put a stain upon his ministry. And Jesus did something immediately to remedy that situation. Hallelujah. Among the many things that we were given as far as redemption is concerned is access to the blessing. And the blessing of the Lord translates to all kinds of good things, including freedom and deliverance from poverty this poverty thing is a very serious thing because while we have those who talk about it like an obsession very few have been able to profess solution and we have those who have avoided it and done so to their detriment 
So we always have two groups of people when it has to do with the subject of poverty and finance. We have those who are overly obsessed. It looks like everything in their lives, everything as far as the communication of teachings and sermons is centered around money, 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 and, and that's the end of it. Then we have those who shy away from it using all kinds of religious guys and just say it does not matter. God will find a way of sorting you. You just love God. And many Many have done that for many years and now are only left with tears and shame. Let God be true and all men liars. I'm saying it again. I made a covenant with God that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant. Your spiritual vibrancy is my number one assignment, but not my only assignment. According to Genesis 17 and verse 6, this is a word that I have received in my spirit for you. It says, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee. It says, and kings shall come out of thee. There is no room for weakness and mediocrity. By the way, let me tell you, you can prosper and start to pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. God desires for you to grow. In the name of Jesus, lay your hands and declare, my destiny you must open up. Good success is my heritage in Christ. And in the mighty name of Jesus, everything that has enthroned itself above the knowledge of God in my life, I come against it now in the name of Jesus. Someone pray. Someone pray. Everything that has declined my prayer life, everything that has declined my word study life, everything that has declined my passion for the house of God, my passion for the things of God, I cry unto you, God of heaven, let there be a revival. Let there be a refiring of my spiritual life tonight. Someone pray. Ah, 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 ah. That thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your might, with all your soul, with all your strength. If you don't love him with all, you don't love him. If you don't love him with all, you don't love him. If you don't love him with all, please pray. Don't be tired. You've been sitting for a while. Pray, pray. Take a few minutes to pray. We are discussing the matters of your destiny. Ah, 
Just a few minutes. Anoint my everything. You have my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. 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 Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me. Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. That nothing and no one will take your place in my life. That nothing and no one will rise above you in my life. That must be your determination tonight to dethrone every idol, the idols of men, the idols of things, the idols of achievements, that they all bow at the feet of Jesus Christ. He alone be exalted as Lord and Christ. And then you watch the wonder working power of a victorious life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are still laying your hands on your head. You are going to pray over your mind. Every stronghold, every demonic manipulation that is making me behave in a way that is driving success from me. Behaviors of dishonor, behaviors of carelessness, behaviors of indiscipline. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Every mindset, every stronghold locked up within my inside that is programming my actions, scheduling seasons of defeat, scheduling seasons of loneliness, scheduling seasons of pain, poverty, failure. In the name of Jesus, the Lord rebuke you. Open your mouth and pray. I rise above and beyond the grip of culture. I rise above and beyond the grip of my past. I rise above and beyond the grip of my associations. I rise above and beyond the grip of my sociological context in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus I pray. Can I give you one more prayer point? Every spirit and every covenant that has tied down those who went before me to produce a life of failure, I declare you are broken concerning me. Open your mouth and pray. Every foundation of poverty, every foundation of mediocrity, whether territorial, whether family, the Bible declares that it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder, the yoke from off your neck, and that it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Someone pray. Everything I saw my father suffer, everything I saw my mother suffer, everything I saw people from my region suffer by the blood of Jesus, I am exempted from it, exempted from begging, exempted from failure, exempted from poverty, Exempted from living a wasted life. Exempted from mediocrity. Exempted from smallness.
Hallelujah. Listen. Please look at me. We're wrapping up. As simple as these principles are, I found them and they changed my life. When we seem to look very super, super human, these are the forces that we stand upon that elevates us and sometimes makes us look as if we're such a big deal. We're not any big deal in ourselves. Except that when you stand on these laws, you tame life like an animal. Let me speak over your life. Oh, only, oh, only, let's have who comes. Holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes. I pray for every closed destiny here that has refused to open up in the name of Jesus the son of the living God even the one who helps men I declare may that door of your destiny be opened now may that door of your destiny be opened now may that door of your destiny be opened now hear me no matter what has gone wrong before now I prophesy to you, remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. My God is giving you a new beginning. My God is giving you a new beginning. My God is giving you a new beginning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for everyone under the sound of my voice who might be under any kind of situation that is weighing on you. Maybe a financial challenge. Maybe you are in debt, you are owing, or there's something wrong and it looks like shame and reproach is imminent. Every time you get into these kinds of trouble, it is the office of the prophetic that brings you out. I decree and declare, everything that looks like shame, I call upon the God of my covenant. In the name of Jesus, let shame and reproach depart from your destiny. 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 Now I pray for you. Whatever has killed your prayer life, your word study life, maybe the challenges of life, maybe you stepped into wrong associations that have downplayed God and downplayed the things of God. Let there be restoration now. Let there be restoration now. finally we've spoken about good success let me pray for you the bible says it was the lord that advanced aaron and moses they did not just go forward they were advanced by god he says by you i can run through a troop by my god i can leap over a wall that a man can receive nothing even financially because i know that many of us here right now if i ask you to submit your prayer request about 70 to 80 percent of it will be largely financial issues god is able to help men to bring you out of financial shame let me speak over your life it will always come from god through men to you therefore in the name of jesus anyone crying for financial help that god will come and bail you out i declare in the name of jesus receive help receive help let help us arise for you in the name of jesus christ please rise up on your feet as we pray i want to please plead with solomon lange to just come and sing that grace song once and then once he sings it i will just pray as he sings it i just want to take the time meditate let that song please as much as possible just allow him do the singing and let him just let him just i think you'll be able to play go ahead 
listen carefully to that song let it just soak into your spirit yes sir amazing grace is the sweetest sound that saved my life I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see you took my shame you took my pain of God is at work in your life but now you know the missing component as you walk full of grace Lord what do I need to do with what you have said you have called me the head and not the tail but leaving it there will not make it good in my life I obtain grace where is the responsibility component and it's interesting that I taught you that there is a dimension called the enabling grace there is an energizing from the spirit that empowers you to now do, to now walk, to now pray, to now study, to now give your very best. Wherever you are in the next one minute, I'd like you to cry for the grace to do, the grace to do. Go ahead, lift your voice and pray. Grace for total obedience, total obedience, that all you demand from me to do, to make good your word, I obtain grace. Someone is praying. Olive Brook, are you praying? Those outside, make sure you are praying. Following by way of the internet, make sure you are praying. By grace, through faith. By grace, 
through faith you're lifting by grace through faith you're rising by grace through faith hallelujah hallelujah faith is your action of, obedi of obedience that you take based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his person our time is fast spent I will just speak over your life and then we're done and in speaking we'll just do it at once I will just speak whether you are trusting God for healing you are trusting God for an open door prophetic declarations are powerful the Bible says and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet they were preserved prophetic words are not just pronunciations prophetic words move beyond the realm of your hearing to the realm of the spirit they program and they create possibilities he says I have been commanded to bless hallelujah praise the name of the Lord so I'm going to stand in faith with the angel over this house and his dear wife and indeed the corporate anointing in this place just to speak over our lives I want you to please receive receive expecting to return with a testimony do you believe that yes, yes. father in the name of Jesus yes. I thank you for the Olive Brook Church thank you for Pastor Jibril and his precious wife thank you because you have allowed us the opportunity to serve your grace your wisdom your power even to your people thank you for the many people who have come gathered here today scattered across this auditorium and outside the many more who are following online i declare oh god that every prophetic word that comes out from now let it be backed up by your power and let it produce potent results in the name of jesus now i decree and declare over your life as a church and as individuals in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God everything that represents shame and represents reproach in your life it comes to an end now it comes to an end now it comes to an end now I decree and declare that everything that looks like delay delay it looks like you've been stagnated in one position not going forward i prophesy to you according to exodus 14 12 to 14 in the name of jesus go forward go forward go forward go forward go forward go forward in the name of jesus Let me declare Psalm 112 over your life. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. He said, His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. I pray for your children. In the name of Jesus, they will not be small. In the name of Jesus, they will not be mediocre. And then he says, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. He says, wealth and riches shall be in his house, and yet his righteousness endures forever. In the name that is above all names, every door that has been closed towards your life, please hear me. I declare over you this week, this week, not next week, I prophesy that those doors are open now. And the axe head fell and they said alas master it was borrowed and he said where fell it let me pray for someone who is owing in debt or any kind of financial trouble by the power of the prophetic I decree and declare may God use men to bring you out of that tragic situation in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon God uses men to lift men I don't know which human vessel has been programmed by God to partner with the spirit for your rising but in the name of Jesus wherever they are I command them to show up in your life I command them to show up in your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ 
and David said is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake and they called on a man called Ziba sent him to Lodeba to go and fetch a crippled man called Mephibosheth and they brought Mephibosheth and he would remain in the king's palace forever I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit the David that will send for you and honor you even at a global scale I command them to show up now I command them to show up now in the name of Jesus the Bible says now Jericho was shot nothing could come in and nothing could go out there are limitations like that they stand before you nothing goes in nothing goes out they just represent an inconvenience but the Bible says at the shout the seventh shout on the seventh day that the wall of Jericho fell flat and it sank in I speak to every wall that stands before you hear the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus I command it to sink and give you way to sink and give you the right way of passage in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah there's a very interesting man in the Bible I just spoke about him called Mephibosheth if you study Mephibosheth the problem he entered was not his making it was the mistake of a midwife midwives are those who help to transit seasons in your life as he was coming out of his mother's womb a nurse was careless and because of the carelessness of that nurse the man became crippled forever the midwives that help us through destiny can leave us as mighty men or can leave us as Mephibosheths are we together now I want to speak because it matters there are men who help you to cross that river to the next level and if they are careless and insensitive they may cripple dimensions of your life and incapacitate you even though Mephibosheth was favored he never walked I decree and declare everyone sent by God as a midwife as a destiny helper may they play their role effectively hallelujah let me declare restoration there are two things the Bible promises to restore number one is time number two things these are very important elements of destiny when you lose time you have lost everything when you lose things you need time to have them back and God said he's powerful to restore both both the years that the canker worm has stolen and the things you have lost I speak to someone I don't know what you have lost so some of you maybe you got saved late maybe you got lazy towards spiritual things but I declare supernatural restoration now I speak prosperity to your life in the name of Jesus by divine favor may your hands be full enjoy the ministry of destiny helpers and I pray for Olive Brook Church I stand upon this exalted altar and I decree and declare step into a new season a new season of influence a new season of power a new season of wealth a new season of revelation in the name of Jesus begin to command results fearful results I speak to the two lift gates of this region I declare that you are open for the gospel you are open for advancement you are open for development by the power of the Holy Spirit and I command the controlling powers within this region in the name of Jesus the Son of the Living God I command that you bow to the Lordship of Christ in Jesus mighty name I pray this confidence should not be the job the business or the investment your confidence should be these seven forces I leave you with this and this will be our prayer as I speak the graces over your life I want you to mention these seven areas one by one and cry in the name of Jesus the areas that are not yet at work in your life please love your destiny enough to not be silent you're online make sure you pray mention them I'll list them one by one as you pray go ahead and pray go ahead and pray Pray in the name of Jesus, meekness, meekness, I receive that grace, teachability, humility of heart, I throw away pride from my life, 
the know-it-all mentality I drive it far from my life someone is praying receive the grace pray Lord I open up my heart to be competent I throw mediocrity out I throw laziness out in the name of Jesus Christ I submit to learning I become skillful valuable competent excellent at a global scale someone is praying pray for credibility Lord the grace to walk in integrity the grace to have a good name a good name that speaks transgenerationally pray for light I remain a student of light access to wisdom access to knowledge access to understanding someone pray now pray for favor let favor begin to speak in my life let favor begin to speak in my life someone is praying favor in the city favor in the country favor in Nigeria in America in Europe all across the globe across my territory my place of work now cry for relationships Lord bring to my life strategic prophetic destiny adding relationships relationships that lift relationships that multiply relationships that open doors relationships that give and bring access finally pray for the anointing in multiplied dimensions you don't have to be a man of God in ministry everybody needs the anointing the anointing is the one factor that is responsible for your rising your shining and the spirit entered me when he spoke unto me and it set me upon my feet take a minute to pray everyone that ask it receive it God is opening all kinds of doors these are the pillars that control lasting wealth these are the pillars that control lasting wealth transgenerational wealth the capital that buys money pray money itself is a product you must have the capital that buys it the same way money buys other physical products I will pray for you for a job even a better one I will pray for you for ideas and increase and prosperity in your business I will pray that God prospers your endeavors your investments but beyond those physical things you must access these intangible riches the Holy Spirit the chiefest of them the Holy Spirit bring into your life the anointing amplifying wisdom giving you the character of meekness turning you into a competent one like Bezalel by giving you the spirit of creativity hallelujah I'm about to speak over your life watch this now you know why Abraham became rich now you know why Joseph even though a prisoner in one night Joseph arose and suddenly became a prime minister you now know the forces that were at work you now know why Daniel even though entered Babylon as a slave within a short time I hope you know it was not only Daniel who was selected a number of the boys eunuchs were selected but what was it about Daniel that kept him relevant these are the forces 
Now you know why Bezalel was such a distinguished person. You know why Joseph was the way he was. Gideon, name them. Solomon, aha. Uh -huh. You see what God gave Solomon. God did not give Solomon an investment somewhere. God did not give Solomon elephant tusks in the wilderness. He did not give him gold. He had an encounter and said, oh God, you saw meekness there. I am but a child. How can I lead these people? And God said, that's right. And that gave room for other things. He said, because you have not asked for the life of your enemies, this is what I will give you, an understanding heart. This guy woke up and with one manifestation of competence, his name went around. Kings started coming with their gifts per month to pay homage, including the Queen of Sheba, who would not come for a long time. But once your rising is bright enough, even kings will come to it. What of Jesus? Do you know? The Bible never tells us that Jesus carried his gold, his frankincense and myrrh. We never see a record of him putting it in any account. He got up and went to the wilderness empty-handed and came out returning in the power of the Spirit. He spent 30 years gathering these seven capitals. When embarrassment was imminent, he used the anointing to command the fish to produce coin. Jesus for you. Because he had favor upon him. He said, go to the city whose, uh, the road, whose, whose roads divide. Lose a donkey there that no man had ridden on. You must have favor to make that kind of demand. Jesus for you. Gideon had such grace upon his life. He sounded a shofar and 33,000 people came. You now see why everybody followed Jesus. To the mountain they came. The deserts they came. By the seaside they came. Master! We have toiled all night and Jesus said there is capital that can bring you wealth. You now know what Elijah had that he looked at the dear woman. I may not have oil, but there is something I can do. Go and borrow vessels. Your oil will multiply. Jesus, water turning to wine. Look at the, the dominion, the invincibility of these factors over mundane things. Five loaf and two fish. Jesus didn't say, is there any bakery close by? He said, no, I know what to do. Five loaf and two fish. And Jesus gave thanks, lifting it up to heaven. He placed something upon it. He said, go and serve them. And they fed 5,000 men minus women and children. Can I tell you, don't ever say you do not have anything. You are insulting yourself. Now you know. It's incredible how we vacillate like a pendulum, rating our abundance or lack of it by the presence of financial figures. So if you see plus one million, you say I've become one million richer. That is economically intelligent, but it's not a spiritual intelligent statement. One million came because one of these seven factors commanded it to come. So if someone looks at you and says, leave the job. just saw fire on someone my God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we look to Yahweh Yahweh our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let me speak over your life in the name of Jesus. You came for this meeting tonight. I decree and declare. I want to speak these seven capitals over your life. And as I mentioned them, I want you to shout a loud amen. The grace for meekness and teachability. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Number two, the grace for skill and competence. I release it upon your life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. The grace for a life of credibility, integrity. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, the passion to pursue wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I release that grace upon you now. Number five, the mantle of favor like you have never experienced. In the name of Jesus, may it land upon your life now. I hope your heart is open. Number six, every relationship needed for this new season of exploits that would translate even to bring financial abundance in the name of Jesus step into that relationship now step into that relationship in the name of Jesus and finally the power to prosper that comes upon men that anointing that engracing that can rest upon a man and compel things to start working in the name of Jesus you have come for this service you are connecting from across the globe receive that anointing right now receive that anointing right now receive that anointing right now in the name of Jesus Christ from tonight let the basis of your confidence not be the money in your account or the physical things you have no a combination of meekness and skill and a good name credibility are we together and light knowledge understanding and then favor and then strategic relationships and the anointing you have that businesses investments jobs or any physical platform are only a means to give this spiritual values expression but you cannot have this and then go down financially no no when the devil wants to destroy your finances he will not come and attack your business or your investments or your job he will first destroy and stop you from having this he will bring pride he will bring laziness and incompetence once he has crumbled this capital from your life then you find out that it will start having a physical effect on your business you will now blame the business blame the investment blame the finance but what is really to be blamed are the relationships not working or the incompetence or the absence of the anointing are we together now the anointing settles the issue of demon spirits causes yokes the anointing has the assignment of breaking the yoke so when the anointing is not there, demon spirits all kinds of wicked spirits can come when I found this I began to rejoice listen to me next time you put your hand in your pocket and you bring out nothing or next time you look at your bank account and you see the reading nothing to write home about don't let the devil lie to you and say you are poor and then don't lie to yourself some of you have money but you do not have true riches no meekness no competence no relationships no nothing but somebody just trusted you with a million or a few millions and you believe you are sustainably rich the bankruptcy of this capital will eventually plunge you into penury this is what God is avoiding now I like you to prophesy and don't feel bad I like you to declare that you and poverty will never have to meet again that in the name of Jesus please don't be silent whether as an individual as a ministry that in the name of Jesus in your lifetime regardless your background regardless what has happened before your coming that you will be the one to change to rewrite these narratives I want you to cause the spirit of poverty someone lift your voice and pray it is important that you prosper it's important that you enjoy material abundance material blessings it is important you are free from financial worries financial captivity it is god's will to give you the ple to give you the kingdom his good pleasure as a man of god i want you to pray that you will not be limited 
as far as finance is concerned, the books will be written, the conferences will hold, the church will be built, souls will be saved, lives changed, believers equipped and mentored. You are a businessman, I want you to pray. You run an NGO, I want you to pray. I will not be limited because of finances. And in this economic, all with all the economic problems across the globe, in the name of Jesus, my case will be different. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I am walking in abundance. I am walking in increase, no going down. Ten years from now, if Christ tarries, I'm still standing. Going from glory to glory, trading these true riches for physical blessings. In the name of Jesus, let me give you an assignment before I speak over your life. I want you to go back home. Please write this seven spiritual capital. Write it down and begin to probe your life one by one. Which of these are not at work in your life? And the ones that are there, to what degree? Make it, take it as a project. Just humble yourself and do what I'm asking you to do. Work on meekness. Work on competence, right? Work on all of these things. And you watch the things that begin to happen in your life. When these forces start playing themselves over your finances, you will not know dryness. Believe me. This is not just a prophetic word. I'm telling you what will happen. Now let me speak over your life. God sent me to not only teach and to preach, but to use the power of the prophetic for the rising of people. There are many people who do not know the power of the prophetic. That is the assignment of the anointing to empower men. I'm going to speak over your life. And you'll be surprised to see the things that start happening. They are not empty words. They are words that are backed up with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, Koinonia, all who are connecting, connected, and are following, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare from this night, I declare, begin to step into a strange order of abundance. I release you into a strange and superior order of wealth. A strange order of financial blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't care what it has been like from the family you came from. The economic situation you might be facing now, whether in debt, whether suffering all kinds of financially related issues, in the name of Jesus, arise and shine. In the name of Jesus, arise and shine. Arise and shine financially. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare over every ministry going through financial pain and tension, Every family going, I'm sensing a strong anointing. I'm praying upon you. Every ministry, every organization, every business, I decree and declare beginning from now, may these spiritual forces start working for you. By reason of these forces activated, I declare over your job, may it begin to produce maximally. I declare over your business endeavor, may it begin to produce maximally. I declare over your investments, may they produce maximally. And I declare over the men that have been sent by God to stand with you and stand by you, I declare enjoy their ministry from tonight. You hear me? By reason of this teaching tonight, every spirit of poverty and lack and failure, every cause of stagnation, parakatosh, balakosh, debalata, I declare they lose their hold over your destiny now. They lose their hold over your destiny now. Hear me? I pray for every pastor and every church connecting 
in the name of Jesus even in this supposed global recession you will not beg you will not lack you will not be in want in the name of Jesus Christ help them please every ministry here that loves God and yet you are going through all kinds of financial tension that projects do not seem projects have been halted whether structural projects transformative projects halted because of the absence of financial resources I declare as these forces come into play step into a new season of supplies And for every family here that has suffered poverty and lack and financial you know failure in the name of Jesus because you came here tonight may my God begin with you and wipe the tears of your family members I said may my God begin with you and wipe the tears of your family members let me pray one last time I just feel led in my spirit to pray for widows, widowers, orphans, all those who their physical support system seem to have gone away from them. Maybe the breadwinner of the family has passed on or maybe there's some kind of issue in the family and right now it looks like those that are around are incapacitated. In the name of Jesus, I declare that as these forces begin to work themselves, let poverty be driven far from your life, far from your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone who has mismanaged financial resources to your detriment, you've lost money, you've had all kinds of things, you've been downsized because you still have access to these forces. I decree and declare the same way the hair of Samson grew back. I speak to your finances, it must grow back. I speak to your finances, it must grow back. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Wave your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. So hear me. We're about wrapping up, but I want you to carry this superior mentality that your true wealth is not measured in just real estate or money or jobs. Your true wealth is this sevenfold combination of these forces at work in your life as you engage them then all the physical expressions like job and business now begin to find their place hallelujah praise the name of the lord keep standing we've already made the altar call i'll just make one announcement and then we're done hallelujah next week by the grace of god will be a miracle service for the month of april Hallelujah. I sense like never before that when the days of his power is going to be an extraordinary moment of prayer, praise. I'm going to be teaching you a few things. We'll be praying for the sick and doing that which is anointed us to do. So make sure you do not come alone. Go around this city and across the nations and bring as many who desire a touch from God. Hallelujah. And then just to announce again, that we should all be in prayer as we prepare. I truly believe with my heart that the UK conference is going to be a defining moment, not just in the United Kingdom, but then across Europe. So I want you to pray. There's prayer happening every day. Um, you can, you know, create your own private, you know, prayer platform and begin to pray. You can give into the conference if God places in your heart. But make sure you participate. We're taking the life and the power of Jesus to um, Europe. And then other announcements about other nations who come uh, in due course. But then please let me encourage you, use this week. Go on our YouTube page again and listen to this message, True Riches. And then invite as many. You know someone whose life and finance is not working. Give them a chance to listen to this teaching. And let it be for our corporate edification have you been blessed tonight father we thank you for giving us this opportunity to learn we remain students in the school of the spirit you have imparted wisdom by your word tonight 
we decree and declare that we are not only recipients, we are practitioners of your word. Now that we have heard and received, we obtain grace to walk in keeping with this truth. And let the results show in our lives. Let the results show in our families. Let it show in our churches, our businesses, in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that you are blessed. As you leave this place, let the blessing of the Lord rest upon you. Let this truth that you know now, let it begin to speak in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And this week beginning, I call it a week of favor. I call it a week of wonders. I call it a week of speed. I call it a week of restoration. I call it a week of laughter. I call it a week of rest roundabout. May that be your testimony in the name of Jesus. As you travel, I declare you go well. As you return, I declare that you return well. In the name of Jesus, you are separated from every evil plot of darkness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're going to share the grace after which I want Come Lord Jesus. Dominion over wicked spirits that cut short the life of people and plague their bodies. Thank God for the little we are doing. But for God's sake, let's contend for higher levels. He showed me a river. He measured a thousand cubits. It was to my feet, a thousand cubits. It was to my knees, a thousand cubits. It was to my loins and a thousand cubits, an overflowing river. A thousand cubits. There are kings, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones, but only as you are, we reign forever, to his kingdom there'll be no with my life that Lord whatever it will take to hold superior dimensions of your power for my generation I will pay that price in Christ I will obtain grace to press because I will never join a queue that keeps misrepresenting the power and the potential of the kingdom ladies and gentlemen we must graduate from falling down and shouting in church to producing valid results that demonstrate the resurrection of christ the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection and great grace great grace great grace that was what was responsible great grace great grace that people will run to your house while you are sleeping they are patient we are not here to wake you we know God is with you we will wait until you wake up because we know that one declaration from you can rewrite the realities of our life this is not human worship the Bible calls God being embodied in a man a mystery of godliness it's a great is a mystery of godliness that God became a man seen of men and angels he said as my father has sent me so send I you the gospel was never supposed to be this difficult to communicate the difficulty is the alternative we try to bring to explain away the absence of authentic results hear me what do you tell a woman 
who comes to church with her child because you told them that Jesus heals how do you explain a woman who comes to church say by 7 a.m. in the morning for a service that will start at 3 or 4 and she sits down with the expectation that Jesus will meet her child do you know what will happen to that woman as she drags that child back home and they say you went to church in the morning some even take a step of faith to take the child out from the hospital and say after all you're on your way dying but I hear Christians say Jesus resurrected let us bring him there this is not about the issue of being called into the healing ministry or not except you hate Jesus you should contend for the healing anointing in this end time more love more power more of you in my life more love more That the average lifespan in Africa last I checked is 48 years that means the moment you get to 48 years in Africa most likely it's countdown for you where is that here and yet respectfully speaking we are all here men and women of God believe us all kinds of books the Bible we have we keep printing it in different versions for better understanding I'm not being sarcastic let me tell you anybody who loves God must throw away that arrival mentality and we must begin to cry in all honesty because thank God for the little we have done and I say little without a sense of exaggeration relative to what we need to bring as we usher in the return of Christ let God be true there are virgin dimensions of power we are yet to get to and we must learn how to hold on to the four horns of the altar and cry until mantles are falling here tonight once again anointings are falling here tonight once again graces are falling here tonight once again graces are falling here tonight once again greatly mentored me in the area of healing through their materials Charles and Francis Hunter and I remember they wrote a book a little book it was captured in a statement that one manifestation of healing is worth a thousand sermons I agree I agree I agree that one person rising from a wheelchair is greater than many series put together no wonder the Bible calls men living epistles that a man's life can be a sermon and it can preach more articulately than any other person regardless your level of oratory I taught you here commanding salvation over territories listen to the message I told you that results are evangelists there is a sermon only results can preach there are certain sermons that only results can preach results are preachers results are preachers healing miracles are preachers 
supernatural manifestations of prosperity can preach the gospel breakthrough favor these manifestations of the kingdom they are preachers my assignment and your assignment is to be worthy conduits that the power of God can flow through us to the nations like a river a few a few weeks from now when UK bring in the gospel with the power of God among the many tens of thousands of people that are coming are people who are sick people who are oppressed hoping that these people coming will not be noisemakers again recycling our expectations and not making them granted do you know what Jesus did to the fig tree that had leaves to attract him and not produce fruit he did not advise it he caused it my prayer for myself all the time is that I do not become a man of God who attracts people proposing many things that I cannot defend listen every revelation God gives you before you start preaching it stay with God to access the grace dimension of that revelation the things we have seen the things we have heard the things our hands have handled of the word of life it says that is what we preach I am not ashamed of the gospel the apostle said for it is the power beyond a message it is the power I don't want to just talk about a healing Jesus I want to demonstrate a healing Jesus I don't just want to talk about a prospering Jesus I, I don't just want to talk about a delivering Jesus patriarchs of faith who have joined the cloud of witnesses now like Reinhard Bonke they would come and say Africa shall be saved and with the simplicity of their voices and their body language they moved across nation to nation and they, nothing could resist them they demonstrated they gave witness to the resurrection I once listened to a message by T.L. Osborne and almost half of the message I was in tears I was not in tears in self-condemnation I just cried and I said God what is this what happened to us at what point did we miss it was it poor mentorship was it inadequate consecration what at what point let me tell you this transformation will always be faster when there are models that now exemplify what people should enter into for as long as we still tell people be this there has to be men who personify these possibilities and we thank God for people in the body of Christ who at least have been able to show a roadmap but I submit to you with every sense of responsibility bragging at our current result will be a mockery of the integrity of God because I submit to you there is still a long journey for as long as there are cancer people dying the doctors now depend on us for support and we are disappointing them we mock and insult doctors and say doctors you are useless we believe in the power of God the doctors have said okay we agree we are limited come and help us they give us access to hospitals to pray for the sick even against the ethics of their practice because we propose to them that we have superior power and yet we've not been able to demonstrate it and with gallancy they tell us get out keep arguing your case while we do our best as instruments of mercy it is my prayer that my generation will be able to stand and lift among the many graces we are not called to do everything but this healing banner not to brag and say I had a meeting five people were healed what does that mean glory be to God but relative to what when a student scores five over hundred did he pass dear lecturer please answer me did he pass no five percent is wonderful you didn't get zero but you still failed they will categorize you together with the person who did not even write the exam. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. 
So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. Till Christ be formed in me. Till Christ be formed in me. I'm forced to recall the vision that I had many years ago. And in that vision, I was in an environment, it was a night time, just like it is when it's night or when there's a curfew. And I saw all kinds of sick people, terrible diseases. And they were lying there. You know how, especially in parts of the north, you just have people who have all kinds of sicknesses. And they were there. And I came, I was heartbroken. And I began to sob, to weep, to look at these people because I felt very helpless. I had the heart and the compassion to help them. But the grace was not there. And then I heard a voice and that voice spoke to me and it says, heal them. You see, like many of you have slept and seen yourselves in crusade grounds. Many of you have slept and seen yourselves healing. But don't let it die as a dream. It is destiny calling on you. It is a mantle revolving around you and saying, when will you respond? You think God has the time to waste those kinds of dreams? Why do you think it keeps coming? Man of God, don't be celebrating mundane things. Whereas there are superior demands in the spirit. You go to bed and there you see someone on a wheelchair watching you. And then you try to pray for the person. I will never forget many years ago. I went to pray for someone in Zaria then. And I sincerely, they gathered as a family. The person had a problem with the back and was, you know, grounded on a wheelchair. And they came believing. They had heard of the little that God was doing. And they truly believed. Suspended everything because I was coming to their house. So you could not say they did not have faith. What then is faith? They believed. And I preached a very sound message. You could make a series out of that message. Powerful message like many of us keep doing. And then when I was done, when it was now time to give witness to the resurrection, I was there and I believed, well, I don't know now, but I believe that I had faith except that I stood before that crippled person and I said in the name of Jesus with every ounce of faith in me and absolutely nothing happened. Not many people will be honest to tell you this. As men of God, we like sounding as if everybody... Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I felt so bad that day. How could I preach so much? Imagine the miracle. Imagine such a powerful sermon, sound exegesis of healing. Now, the moment had come to give witness. Does it look like what is still happening today in many of our circles? When it has to do with teaching what God can do, we have done well. He can heal. When it has to do with singing it, my goodness. When it has to do with acting drama of healing, you know, youth groups and teenage groups in churches act drama so beautifully. You would see how Jesus resurrected and how Satan is falling up and down. Except that unfortunately that is acting for many people. When the sick become healed, when the oppressed become delivered, when we make Isaiah 61 come alive again, ladies and gentlemen, there will be a wave of civilization that the church will reintroduce. I hope you know it is results that define civilizations. I give you an instance. It was the discovery of the internet that literally brought another kind of civilization. Now electric cars are coming. Is that true? Yes. Now virtual reality and all kinds of things. The metaverse con uh, concept, 
internet of things all of this advancement in technology they are literally civilization does not just happen it's a man's courage backed up by his intention an individual can get up like one person got up introduced the internet and now most of our children and teenagers do not even know what a typewriter looks like you see little children and all they know is to flip they don't know how to punch they don't know what keypads look like that is how believers can reintroduce a civilization that a day will come when many people will run and say come let us go to the house of the lord does that look like a scripture you have read that it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain listen it's more than prosperity talk this is beyond money we are talking of intangible things that money cannot buy like the power of god he said the money perish with you for you think you can buy the gift of god do you know how many people can carry their life's earning? Literally their life's earning. They diagnose someone and say, we need 20, 30 million. And that man has saved all his money, representing all his labor. And in one year, it disappears. And it's not like there is a guarantee for healing. And while that is happening, sadly and respectfully, we men of God, I come back to us again. We're here jumping and bragging on stage, whereas there are people dying. And you see, the real referee is not us. The real referee are the unbelievers. The unbelievers are the umpire. They compare what we are saying versus what is producing from our lives. And they say, no, this does not add up. But the good news is that this will be one Easter that will be with a difference. Because for you, your assignment tonight is not only to celebrate the ceremony of Easter, but to know that there is a mantle that is looking for you. There is a mandate crying for your destiny to become a validator. God is depending on your witness. The world has it, have a right to say we lied. Do you know that when Jesus resurrected, remember? one of the synoptic accounts when they discovered that he was alive the bible says they paid people and they said please make sure you say he's not alive satan is still paying people today paying systems and structures to say jesus is not alive but our assignment is not just to sing up from the grave our assignment is not just to celebrate the ceremony I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Whoever you want to. In the next two minutes I want us to pray wherever you are let this be your Easter gift to your destiny I want you to cry to the God of heaven and say the grace component that makes to be a validator of your resurrection I obtain someone open your mouth and pray Shalenda breska veretos kapari katos shavrendes kemash embra katapa katapa ratos kepele katos yata the grace the grace to give evidence to the resurrection the grace someone pray someone pray. Father, I am available. Let it fall like it was in the day of Pentecost upon my life upon my singing ministry upon the word ministry you have given me upon my business let me become a validator of your resurrection not just a celebrator of your resurrection
pray one minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone. Let me say this one time, and then I'll just speak over those who are trusting God. We have to do this at least to honor the resurrection of Jesus. Let me repeat the last statement that I made, that our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection. The greater task is to be validators of his resurrection by revealing the kingdom, the power, the glory of this Jesus. Apostle Peter, on the day of Pentecost, while he was preaching the first sermon after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, he said, this same Jesus that you have been crucified, that you crucified, has now been exalted as Lord and Christ. The Bible says when they heard, they were caught to the heart. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive of this spirit. He says, for the promise is unto you and to your children, your children's children, as many as are far off, even as the Lord shall come. Let me take a minute out of our limited time already to just speak over those who are trusting God for a miracle. In one minute, I'd like you to lay your hands where you are trusting God for healing or your hand on your chest if you are standing for someone or trusting God for any kind of miracle. Let me just speak over your life to honor this day. Jesus I decree and declare right now every devil of darkness that has plagued anyone watching by television watching by the internet from our Zaria family our global family all the overflows down to this auditorium in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power that raised Christ from the dead I command that spirit to give way now I decree and declare every sickness, heart conditions be healed now. Yeah. Cancer be healed now. Yeah. HIV be healed now. Yeah. Kidney conditions, lung conditions be healed now. Yeah. Blood related conditions be healed now. Yeah conditions be healed now yes, ear conditions be healed now yes, everyone here who has been bound by any spirit I lose you now yes, I lose your family now yes, I lose every member of your family now yes, anyone here and those watching who has been appointed unto death in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare the fullness of your days you fulfill. Yeah. And anyone here who is particularly in ministry, serving the purposes of the kingdom, from tonight, I forbid you from being barren as you communicate the gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. With great power, you will bear witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Genotypes. Every negative genotype be changed right now in Jesus' name. Barrenness be healed now. Hepatitis be healed now. Pile be healed now. 
peptic ulcer be healed now bone related conditions be healed now those who are watching from any hospital or any point where you have a patient let the power of God on this resurrection day move through the airwaves and touch that person right now in the name of Jesus Christ now let me pray for you for all of you who are here from today I stand in the name of Jesus and I empower your hands I release you as proof producers I release you as miracle workers I release you as signs and wonders in ministry in business in career receive it in the name of Jesus Christ listen from today you will no longer wait until you come for koinonia become an extension of these possibilities in the name of Jesus Christ listen let me challenge you when you go back home go and meet those who are sick and take a step of faith and lay your hands on them don't say I cannot do it lay your hands if your loved ones tell you just remember I have been raised up with Christ just remember the Spirit of God lives in me that the resurrected King has resurrected everything in me I am you are an ambassador a validator a witness carry this mentality today